So Hawaii public schools are not horrible. I'm not just saying that because I graduated from public school after attending private school for about six years. I think in Hawaii, there's this general consensus that private schools are up here and public schools are down here. And there's this big gap. And I guess by extension, if your child goes to private school, they're up here. And if your child goes to public school, they're somehow down here. But the thing is, there are some amazing kids in public school now. Not, not 10, 20 years ago, now. And there are some amazing things that public schools are doing now. The thing is, why don't we hear about it more? Why isn't anyone talking about it? Okay, well, if no one else will, then I will. And that's what this video is gonna be about. I recently had the opportunity to attend a DOE showcase where students from across the state gave presentations. And these weren't just any students, these were public school students. And I wanna share what I saw and what I observed because I think people, especially parents, need to know what's really going on. Because the way that we change public opinion about public education in Hawaii is not through test scores. It's about sharing what some of these kids are capable of doing. Hello from Hawaii. So I was only able to visit five of the tables and talk with some students, but I did want to share specifically what I learned and what I was totally impressed by. The first was a pair of elementary school students. I think they're about second grade. And their presentation was about pollinization and agricultural engineering and it was it was great because as i approached them they were like pitching it up like they were ready to go they had their whole script down how they were going to engage me as as this person just walking by it was so incredible to see the courage and the bravery that these two little girls had they had about six points and based on that I guess the idea of agricultural engineering, from my understanding from them, was they were trying to figure out ways that they could help pollinize flowers because of how big an impact pollinizing flowers has on the environment. And so they, they had these two like inventions that they sort of mocked up. <laughs> and one of the inventions was this, this long stick. And at the end of the stick, there was like a cotton ball and they're demonstrating how this stick could be used to help pollinate flower to flower. But what it really impressed me the most was their ability to explain what they were doing. And these are second grade kids. So the fact that they could engage adults that way, boy, well ahead of their time. And then I walked to another table and it was a high school who had a welding apprenticeship program. And to me, that was so refreshing to, to hear about because, you know, we talk about trying to get kids prepared for the workforce. And this program was specifically targeting the trades, which is something that I think we need to talk about more here in Hawaii as a viable way, as, as, as a viable career path, because oftentimes, again, we get in this push for either something like STEM or, you know, got to be a doctor, attorney, architect. Maybe not everybody wants to go into those fields. And so I thought it was great that this high school had focused primarily on, on welding and not just welding, I guess, commercially, but specifically, I think they're targeting more auto welding and there were three students there and I asked them questions. And of course they went over what the program was, but I asked them what they're gonna do after. Like what was the point of them taking this apprenticeship program? Like is it just, is it a cruise thing or, or, or what? And I asked each of the students and they were able to give me very good answers on where they saw themselves, you know, what they were gonna use this program for in their own career, whether it was working in a, in a body shop or maybe they were gonna start their own business. And, and I even asked them, are they taking business classes? Because it's not enough just to have the skill, but you have to also be able to figure out how you're gonna make a living, whether it's working for somebody else or starting your own business. Those are all skills that we didn't learn. There was no class back then to teach you that type of stuff when I was in school. And, and so it was great to hear that that, that these people are, are, that these kids are preparing themselves, not just gaining those technical skills, but also preparing themselves for the business aspect. I hope that that program or programs like that get more support because those are very practical skills that will lead to actual jobs for people to stay here. The third table I visited was another high school. So I, I spoke with these, these, these two young girls about what, what it was, but actually their track was more healthcare professionals. And just hearing about 
where they saw themselves and, and, and actually the, the openness of this particular program to get people, to get students interested in, hey, what are you going to do after high school? Here are a lot of different tracks and paths that you might take. When I was back in high school, I didn't really think much of that. Maybe my senior year, I thought I might be a science teacher. But the fact that they have these kids thinking about that by their junior year in high school to me is amazing. And I know that they could possibly change their mind. But the classes that they were taking, they could receive certain certifications so that when they did jump into the workforce, let's say after two years in uh, community college or you know getting their associates or even four years or pursuing their master's, at least they have certain certifications that they could jump into the workforce and be somewhat equivalent in these certain aspects. I think that was great. And the fact that it's all covered under the Department of Education, it, it just, I think gives them that confidence and encouragement to actually go out and do this kind of stuff. Now the fourth group of students that I visited, they were elementary school students and their project or what they were working on was about e-waste, but I love how they packaged it. So they have all these Chromebooks that are just out of date. Their operating system doesn't, isn't updated or they're getting old and they're in need of repair. And what these students were doing was they were basically repairing these Chromebooks, replacing the batteries, and they were reprogramming them with video games or some, I, I don't know what it was, but <laughs> they encouraged me to try out and play video games. So they had controllers and we were playing video games and I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. And they took me aside and they showed me how to open up one of these computers, how to replace the battery, and I was, I was just, I was just very impressed. The fact that they were able to explain it very well to an adult who has no experience unscrewing a laptop open. But that, again, the whole theme behind this was not just the video games. It was the idea of e-waste and how to reduce that, especially in a place like Hawaii, where we have limited space for any kind of waste. It was just really exciting to see kids excited about repairing computers. And the last table I visited was a robotics team. It was an elementary school and there were three girls that were on the team and they were talking about their robot. For some reason, the conversation turned from robotics to their sister school or exchange. They have a school in Japan that they, they some students go and some students from Japan, they come. And I thought that was, <laughs> we were talking more about that, I think. I think they're more excited about the, the Japan exchange. But it was just so interesting to hear from their perspective the things that they learn, they get to host, or they, they get to interact with students very different from them. And I don't know if across the board other elementary schools have that, but I think that's just a wonderful opportunity for young students to be able to travel, but also interact with students from a different place. Growing up, I don't think we had an exchange program with any school. We had some international students. I think I, there was one from, from China and one from Japan but I don't remember us having the opportunity to go or them to actually stay here. Being exposed to different cultures, being exposed to different types of students, languages, <sighs> wonderful. Now I probably could have spent another hour to two hours walking around and I wish I had the time to visit all of the tables. It was just so refreshing to hear from young people. And I know by me saying young people, it makes me sound old, but I, I'm getting older but it was so nice to hear directly from these students to see what they're, they're interested in, what they're presenting on. It was really great. And all of it was new to me. As someone in the general public, I had no idea this is what the schools are doing because typically what we hear about public education, test scores, enrollment, not having enough teachers, like those are the things that we generally hear about the news, but we don't hear what's actually happening in the schools unless you're part of that school maybe you might have a newsletter but we don't hear about what they're doing i think that's really what's missing i think what the department of education in hawaii needs is a brand advocate or a brand evangelist there's this guy named guy kawasaki he's a local boy he grew up in kalihi and he went to iolani after going to stanford he ended up at apple as their chief software evangelist and that sounds really fancy, but back then his job was to somewhat spread the gospel about the Macintosh. And so he would talk to software and hardware developers to hopefully garner up some excitement so that they would create stuff for the Mac. I mean, really it was just an extension of marketing, but still 
you had someone who was so passionate about the Macintosh that he could share his passion about it and hopefully get people excited about it. Anyone who would listen. And maybe public schools in Hawaii don't think that they need that type of advocacy because, well, it's public education, it's public school, and it's just sort of the default. But in today's social media world and collective thinking, I think that they do. They need someone to advocate on their behalf and to share what is going on. Because I think there's this real fear of public school in Hawaii. It's why 33,554 students attend private school, whereas 167,000, let me get the number right, 649 students attend public school. And that's roughly 17% of the population in private school. And I think especially for parents coming from the mainland or coming international to Hawaii, they don't know. They just hear what other parents are talking about. And I think there's this fear and there's these steps that parents take to ensure that their kids get into a private school because of what they've heard indirectly. And so I think there needs to be some sort of public school brand advocate that can share the great parts of public school. And I don't think this can be some communications professional who does the job, who does the branding, but then sends their own kid to private school. It's gotta be someone who believes so much in public education that, oh my gosh, they are willing to send their own kids to public school now. Not they used to send them to public school back 20, 30 years ago, but they're willing to do it right now because they are championing the idea of public education in Hawaii. Someone who can share all of the great aspects of going to public school in Hawaii. And these may be social or other opportunities that we just don't hear about. That we can finally look past the poor test scores or some of the broken down facilities that need to be fixed or even the number of emergency hires that seem to be hired every single year. Because it's not public school versus private school. No, it's public school versus public school's reputation. And in order to overcome that, we have to start changing the narrative of public school here. And the way that you do that is by sharing what's really going on. So thanks for watching and aloha.